Hi, this is Anne with an anagram on um, how to take inline code and um, insert it into a function and create code that you can reuse over and over again by simply calling that function and giving it different arguments, telling it to do slightly different things. Um, this is a concept um, and a technique that students struggle with every year. And um, this is my latest attempt to try to explain it. So I am starting with the week's exercise um, in um, here on, tat, on slide number 18, um, where basically the, we're being told to take the original dot zero code, make a copy of it, and um, change the, change the index.html to access the new copy. So one of my cats, um, Winston, has graciously allowed me to work in his account. And so that's where Winston is right now, is he's, um, he's created a new function called um, funfunc1, um, a new file, and he's copied the code out of the zero file and into it. And if we run that, um, we just see that it, it, it is drawing this, the original picture with a blue circle on the left and um, a black outline arc on the right. And the instructions um, for this task say, um, read the code, uh, make sure you understand what the different sections are. So just very briefly, there's some code up here that you're not supposed to change. This is just basic infrastructure for um, making drawing work in this environment. So don't change that um, at all this time. You may eventually have some exercises where you're changing things like this, but today leave that code alone. You're gonna put your new function in here um, in the section that says write new functions in this area. And then everything below that, the code is going to change slowly as you do your work, uh, but you're, you're basically going to replace these calls with function calls. So let's go back to the instructions and pick up where Winston let off, left off. Um, and I will take over for him. Okay, so we're gonna make all the changes for this step two in that funfunc1.js file. Okay, we've gone through and, and I hope you've looked at all the slides and maybe even tried this on your own, maybe even succeeded and you're just seeing how I would do it. And, and we want to do two things. We want to add a function, and when we write the function declaration, we want to add a comment above it so that um, there's a description of what that function is going to do. So let's take a look at the first function we want to add. And there are two functions you have to add. I'm going to do this for one of them. So the function signature, okay, that is the um, the description of the function declaration and what parameters it needs to do its work is right here. And so adding the function to your code um, is not at all difficult. Um, you actually can simply copy that and bring it over to your code. And since the new functions go in here, paste that line in. And then functions always start with a curly bracket and close with a curly bracket. And the IDE even adds that second bracket for me. Okay. Now, that is a complete function, but it doesn't do anything at all. Okay. So having it there doesn't change how this code runs. Um, if I just run it, it's neither broken nor different. Okay. Um, but I can go ahead and fulfill one piece of the instructions here, this one about adding a comment right now. And that is, you need to add a comment that says what the function does. And I have quite handily given you a description for each function. So don't make this part more complicated than it has to do, than it has to be. Grab that line, okay? And above your new function, add a comment and simply you can dress that up with, with correct capitalization if you want, okay? Now, in this week's exercises, you're working with some functions in the katas exercise that are different in a couple ways. One, those are functions that return a value. 
This function will never return a value. Its job is to do a series of code steps and to do some work. So you call it sort of like a command. Um, and the comments for the katas are very elaborate. And your job is to be working with those comments as much as with the code itself. But in this case, we have a function that doesn't return a value. And I'm saying you're welcome to just have a very simple comment that um, describes what it's going to do, okay, documents it. And but you have to have that in order to get full points. Okay, so we have a function here, and the and the instructions say that you want to move code into here. But let me elaborate a little bit on why you'd want to do that, because we talk about having functions make it easier to reuse code. And what I have people do every year, which is, which is kind of a natural reaction really, is they go, well, I don't need to do anything special to reuse this code. I've got, you know, I've read the documentation. I know what this does. This command in particular is drawing a circle and it's two math pi radians around, okay, which means that it's a whole circle, whereas this is one math pi radians around, and that means it's a half circle, okay? So if I want to draw another circle, why can't I simply do this? Copy that code, insert another copy, okay, and say, let's make the next one red, and if we read our documentation for the arc call, we know those are your x, y locations. So let's just change those values to something different. Uh, I erased one. Well, that'll, that's one reason why you don't want to do this this way is it's easy to get rid of more code than you want. But the arc command has an x and a y number, a radius, and then your angles. And so that should work. I should get a blue circle and a red circle, and they're not in the same location. And if I hit run, I get two circles. So I've reused the code, right? The trick is it just is, it's the more lines of code you have to copy when you want to reuse, the harder it gets. So if I want to do a third one and I come down here and I go, let's do a purple one. And instead of 250, let's do 350. 350, I know some of you are pounding on the monitor at this point, but be patient. Okay, I end up with code that doesn't quite work right. And the reason it doesn't quite work right is I made just a classic cut and paste error, which is when I copied this code, which frankly would be easier to reuse if I at least was putting a space after each fill. Okay, but when I copied this to make a third copy, I didn't quite get my cursor down far enough and I only copied through the stroke and not the fill, okay? So I can go back now and I can do ctx.fill and run it again. And I now have my three circles and I've reused this code. But you can see how long this gets. You can see how easy it is to simply make a typo when you're, when you're typing. And, or leave some code out, and then suddenly the code doesn't do what you want. So using code packaged into functions just eliminates two or three dimensions of errors that you can make. So I'm just gonna go back to the original code, get rid of all this, and talk about moving this code into a function. Now, um, so far, we aren't calling this draw circle, it's not doing anything. And one of the things I like to do, and this is not in the directions and you don't have to do it, is I like, I like particularly when I'm first developing any kind of function, I like to have a console log message at the top that says draw circle, okay? And sometimes the worst mistakes are the ones where the code is just not doing what you want, it's not doing anything at all. And, and if I run this and I don't see any message in the console log that says draw circle called, I'm reminded that draw circle has never been called. Okay. And what I want to do, if we go back to the slides, okay, I want to get down to a point where um, 
I can under this comment that's in the code now, I can change that to say red and I can call draw circle. Okay, so I'm just gonna grab that line and I'm gonna go ahead and put it right here. Okay, and um, it's actually sort of a magical proper of JavaScript that I can call that. And even though this code doesn't use those values, um, nothing's gonna go wrong. And what I should see is in addition to this code running, I should see that a console log. So I'm just gonna do that. And it's unfortunate with this color scheme, which is otherwise better for, um, for doing demos than the dark color scheme. It's really hard to see the console log statements. So I've highlighted that over there. So I now know that draw circle is getting called, but it's really not doing anything. So let's just do the most simple minded way to package this code up in that function. And that's simply to cut it and put it into here. Okay. And I'm going to hit my prettify button so it gets indented correctly. Okay. And, um, and what I should see is really that everything works exactly the same. Okay. Still get a blue circle. Um, and I see the draw circle has been called. But the, what we're trying to do is eventually draw this, um, this picture with the function. And right now we're not getting our circle over here. We're not getting it red, even though we're calling it with all these values. So the thing about, um, the thing about arguments, these are arguments and parameters, okay, is that effectively what happens is this is like a statement. If I had a statement in my code right here that said var x is equal to 450, and instead of this hard code of 450 down here, I used x, I'd see that, that this code still works. Okay, um, if I have var, var color, now this isn't part of your um, assignment, but I'm just, I'm just trying to make a point about variables and parameters. Let's see what's a good color. Green. Okay. And instead of having a hard coded string here, I use stroke style. Okay. I can see that this is that this is changing. So I now I'm using a variable x and a variable stroke style instead of hard coded 450 and a hard coded string. I'm going to control Z back. Okay, to get back where we were. But what you want to do with your parameters here is exactly what you would do if you were had a, a variable line. You don't put a var x equal 250 here. When you call the value of the argument gets handed to the x here. So having x, y, radius, and fill color here is like having variable declaration statements. It's just they're all compressed into one. So if I want to start using these values from the function call in here, then I simply have to find the place where X is supposed to be used. And X in the arc call is here, okay? And Y in the arc call is there. So now, instead of getting the 150, 150 hard-coded, always in the same place circle, 
I'm going to get, I should get a circle that is 450 on the x axis and 150 on the, on the y axis. So over to the right, same height. So I run that. Okay. And the little, the little half arc is on top of that. So you're going to have to do the same work for the arc to get it, um, to get it drawing over on the left. But just to finish this out, okay, if I want to do a, um, instead of having my circle always be 100, I want to be able to call it with different values. All I do is I take this radius variable that's declared in the function signature, and I come down here and I reuse it in this call, okay? And the same with the fill color, okay? The fill style is set to a fill color. In this case, it's hard-coded to blue, but I want to make my fill color be variable. So I take that variable name and I use it instead of this hard-coded string. Now, we are changing this line because we're having the stroke around the outside of the circle always be black. We could change that. We could add another argument, but we're not. And we have some stuff here that always has to work the same. You always have to begin path, call arc, call stroke, and then fill the circle. Okay. But now that I've done that, I should see the next time I run the code that not only is it over here and it'll be the same size, but we're going to have a red circle finally. Okay. And then I basically can go to town if I just copy this. Um, and I go, let's do 350 blue, 250 purple, okay? And I suddenly, with three neat lines of code, instead of a whole bunch of copied lines of code, I can draw in as many circles wherever I want, whatever color. And one of the points about using functions and many of the things we do in coding is that we're abstracting from detailed lines of code to, to what's called the problem domain. So if I'm trying to draw something made up out of different shapes, what I'd like to do is have code that talks that I'm working with that says, let's draw a circle and I'll tell you where and what color. And I don't want to have to think at this level of detail all the time. So by packaging this level of detail into a function, which then I can call with a command that basically abstracts and, and, and gathers together all the attributes of the circle I want to call into one line, I can think more in the problem domain and less at a level of detail where it's easy to get confused. Um, so I'm going to neaten this up. and. Um, Let's see. Okay, and then take these two lines out because you don't want to have too much extra stuff here. Um, run this again. And we're real close to, oh, I don't know why I chase that. The line from the slide is 450, 150, 100 red. 450, 150, 100 red. Okay. And get rid of the extra quote. And I'm halfway done with the exercise. What I'm going to leave as an exercise to you is to do the same work for ARC, which frankly has, a, has less code you need to change. Okay. So put your ARC function in here. Okay. Call your ARC function down here. And you're supposed to change the comment to make sure the comment matches the code. Okay. Good luck with that.